Today I am going to show you how to do a very soft sourdough sandwich bread and I am really really excited to do this. This is my very first time to do it this way. This is not the, my normal sandwich sourdough sandwich bread and um, I actually like this a whole lot better. So and I, I hope everybody can hear me okay. I have been very congested the last four days now and I actually had zero voice this morning. <laughs> so it is coming back and I, I hope everybody can hear me okay doing this. Um, it's just, it's taken a while to get over this and I wanted to get this video out. So uh, this, so what I'm doing here is this is the morning, let's see how do I explain this to where it makes sense. Hopefully this makes sense. This is the morning of the day before I make my dough so 24 hours before I make my dough and I just fed my starter that's all I did to make sure it was nice and active now here is the night before I'm gonna make my dough and so I'm getting a cup of starter and I, I am using a half cup here that's why I did two scoops but to make two loaves of sandwich bread I'm using one cup of active starter. That means you want it nice and bubbly and it's risen in your jar. And then I'm also going to get one cup of filtered water that has been warmed. So you want it to be like between 90 and 100 degrees kind of baby bottle temp. And um, then just mix it together, get it nice and mix in together before you add the flour. And that's going to help kickstart that starter. And then I'm going to add one and a half cups of flour. No, I am not using a scale on this. Yes, I said that I always use a scale. Um, I was given this recipe to try because my kids prefer the yeast sandwich bread. And I really wanted to try and get them on the sourdough for their sandwich bread. And someone told me that this was very much like the same texture and it 100% is, if not softer. So um, uh, it, I, it was given to me in cups. I do want to try this again and measure it out and on top of my scale so I can kind of see the grams that ends up working out and then I'll be able to, to know the grams. But for now, I'm doing it by cups. So I mix everything together. You're basically what we're doing here the night before is making a second starter. So I mixed it all together and made sure all of the flour was wet. There were no dry spots. And then I'm just covering it really tight with this plastic wrap. And that's because we don't want the air to get in there. There, Yes, you do want the starter to breathe, but there's enough room of air in that bowl that there's going to be enough yeast trapped in there and it will be perfectly fine to stay covered. Covering it with the plastic will also trapping in that warmth from the water and so that's going to help it get nice and active and bubbly overnight especially since it's really cold outside. So this next this is the next morning and uh, when I checked the starter it was nice and bubbly and active just like we want so in a small pot I'm taking two tablespoons of butter and then two tablespoons of honey. I use raw honey but any kind of honey you would like to use or really any kind of sweetener probably you would like to use I used honey and honestly I would probably want to put another tablespoon just because we like our bread a little sweeter and so I would probably do another tablespoon and uh, yes I am using a metal spoon in my honey I actually just found out over Thanksgiving that uh, you're not supposed to use metal in your honey I had never known that and so um, I am gonna make some changes with that but here I am using a metal spoon so I have the burner on very, very, very low because you don't want to get this hot. And I'm just mixing the butter and honey together where it's nice and melted. And now I'm going to add one and a half cups of milk. And I'm going to slightly warm that up too. Again, you just want baby bottle warm. You don't, you don't want it too hot to where it ends up killing your starter. So I'm going to whisk this together. And you want to whisk it until it's nice and smooth and all mixed in together. And you want it like, if you want to check the temperature of it, I would say like between 100 and 110 degrees. So here is the starter. You see it's nice and bubbly and active. And I just pour that straight in there. 
and then I mix it all together. It's not going to mix in perfect. You're, it's still going to be really liquidy. Your starter and your milk mixture is still going to seem like it's a little separated. And that is okay because once you add the flour, it's all going to end up incorporating. So it's not going to in incorporate perfect here, but you do want to do a little bit of a mix to make sure that, that warmth gets into that starter. So now for the flour, it's five cups of flour. So I am using all-purpose flour. And I am using a half cup thing here because a, a cup won't fit in my jar. Um, and I actually don't do <clears throat> all five cups. I do four cups first. And that is because I am not using a scale. I am making sure that my flour is nice and fluffy. And that's because when you're measuring out with cups, when you're baking, it can vary from day to day, season to season, temperature to temperature. So I did only do four cups and we're going to go from there and see if we need to add any. Now I added one tablespoon of salt, and now I'm going to go ahead, get it on the mixer with the dough hook, and start mixing it. So here it is starting to form a ball. It's not a perfect ball, and that's completely okay. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. And I'm, I, it is a little sticky, so I did add pr uh, probably a quarter cup there to see if I can see any kind of difference. Um, and so I'm going to pull it here. It is pulling nicely. It's stretching, but it, it does start to break. And it is a little bit sticky, which is okay. This is going to be a stickier dough, um, but it is still a little too sticky. And I did not add more flour. If your dough, it was pulling and stretching nice and good, and so that means my flour was okay. But with it still being that sticky and not stretching quite as far as I wanted, I needed to knead it a little bit more. So to make sure that gluten gets nice and active. So I needed it 10 more minutes. And you see here, I'm able to stretch it quite, quite a bit. And it's also called the window pane test. If you can stretch it a good bit and you see light coming through, but it's not breaking, that's a good, um, a good dough. So here I take it off and I'm putting the beeswax wrap on top. You can use a plastic wrap, whatever you want, but you do want to try to keep the air out. So by covering it with something that is airtight, you're going to keep it from drying out while it rises. And then you're also locking in that heat and moisture from the warm milk. So um, that's what we want to do because that's what's going to help it rise. And it does rise pretty quickly. I think it was like two hours and it had doubled when I checked it. So this is a dough that you are able to make and bake within a day of making it. You're not having to wait a day or two before you actually have your bread. So it's two hours later, it has risen. I oiled my pans here that I'm going to bake it in. Now I'm d lightly flouring my countertop here and I'm taking this off and you're about to see like that it's beautiful. It's nice and smooth whenever after you mix your dough you want your dough really silky and smooth. You don't want it lumpy. If it's still lumpy or kind of rough looking you want to knead it more. You want to knead it until you get this nice smooth texture. It is still a little sticky. That is completely okay because it is very stretchy and it is very smooth and that means we have a nice good healthy dough here and it also smells amazing it smells exactly like the rolls that I make I make um, some yeast rolls that everybody usually asks me to make and uh, they love it and it smells just like those rolls and so I was very 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 excited about this so I am forming it in a ball and I'm going to try my best to divide it in half. I don't get it perfect. It's okay if you don't get it perfect. If you want to get it perfect, you can measure out on a scale your dough and try and get it as close as possible. So I just kind of eyeball it, which isn't perfect, but it's okay. So now, um, normally you would use a, uh, a rolling pin for this. I just use my hands because I didn't feel like dirtying my rolling pin and it worked fine. So I flattened it out and tried to form it into a rectangle as flat as I can get it. You want it pretty thin and then you fold it over twice making two triangles and then from the long side of the triangle you want to roll it towards the top tip of the triangle and try um, to, to get it rolled out there and into, you know, basically a roll. And so what I'm doing for the rest of it is I'm do I'm rolling it towards me and then I'm tucking everything over towards the bottom and then trying to flatten that back out. And then I'm rolling towards me and then I'm tucking everything underneath. So you want the top pretty and the bottom ugly. 
And it's okay for the bottom to be ugly. One, you're not going to see it. And two, as it bakes and settles, it's going to even out. But you want that nice pretty top because that's your tension for your bread. So here I'm going to do my second one. And you can see here, it, you know, it's really, it's not that sticky of a dough. It is a very moist dough, but I'm not having a hard time with it sticking to my countertop or my hands. I did clean my counters off before I did this, so um, it's okay for me to do this. And I used that dough there to get the rest of the flour off my counter so I don't have a big mess to clean up afterwards. So again, I'm taking this dough and I'm getting it into a thin rectangle. We're doing two triangles here again, taking the longest part of the triangle and rolling it towards the top corner. And then we're going to make a log here again and we're going to do the tuck and fold. So I'm pulling it to me, I'm folding everything under, pulling from the top part, pulling it towards the bottom, pulling, tuck, pulling, tuck. And then I'm going to roll it, get everything nice and even, and then stick it in the pan. Now, when I put it in this bread pan, I am going to set it on top of my oven. I've been doing a lot of other things, so my oven is nice and warm. It is cold in the house. My house is staying in the winter between um, 66 and 67 degrees, so it is pretty chilly in the house. So since my oven's nice and warm, they're both going to sit on top of my oven, and I am going to cover them with a very light cloth because if it, when they start to rise, I don't want the cloth weighing them down and making them kind of mushroom on top. So here I'm checking it. If you can see or tell, when I poke them, they kind of bounce back out. That They're rising very, very good, but they weren't quite ready. They still had a lot of rise to do. And so I did wait a little bit longer. Um, here I am uh, score, scoring. Yeah, I think it's scoring. I am scoring it because I'm getting ready to put it in the oven. It had been another two hours for it to rise to this point. It did have longer to go because it still had more, more uh, bounce back and more give. But I wanted to go ahead and have it for dinner. So it was okay that I went ahead and baked this. The texture was still absolutely fantastic. And so I did do three slits crossways on the bread and I put it in the oven at 475 degrees Fahrenheit and I baked it for 35 minutes. Okay, now next time I do it, I do think, I don't need to lower the temperature, but I do need to lower my time because if you see here, it did get a little burnt on top. Uh, the other one is much worse. <laughs> so it's kind of a win and a fail with this try because uh, it did get burnt on top, but the inside was still fantastic. So I think the next time I do it, I'm gonna put it in for 20 minutes. And even though that's a big jump down, I'm gonna put it in for 20 minutes and just keep an eye on it from there. And then I'll be able to gauge how long um, I need to write down that um, I realistically need to bake it because I think my oven bakes a little hotter than what this recipe I was given um, is saying. So I did dump it out on the cooling rack and this was a, since it was burnt, um, it was a very hard crust. Now one way to soften that a little bit is rubbing the butter like I'm doing or you could even wrap your loaves in a towel and that steam from the cool towel and the hot loaves, it does soften your crust. Um, I think this did help, but it didn't soften it quite enough for us because this was, I mean, the outer part was burnt. So it was going to be pretty crusty no matter what I did. But this is the inside. It's absolutely fantastic. I am so excited for y'all to try this. And it is a little more hands-on, a little more steps to do for this one than my normal sourdough sandwich loaf, but it's so, so, so worth it. And I am still under probably 30 minutes of hands-on time doing this.